Good morning and welcome to St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church in Stittsville for this Sunday morning worship service, July 25th, 2021. We gather to worship God, we gather to offer praise that is due to the Creator. Let's come before God in worship. Our call to worship today will be done by Herb Brennan. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into a joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who live in it. Let the floods clap their hands, let the hills sing together for joy. Let us worship God. As I was preparing for this worship service and thinking about songs and hymns that had to do with faith, it also struck me that today is the 25th of July, and exactly five months from now will be Christmas Day. So let's begin with O Come All Ye Faithful, number 159.
Let's come before God in prayer. Let us pray. We gather here, O God, in your presence. We gather wherever we are in your presence. In these summer months, we're reminded that you are all around us. When we're off camping, when we're at our cottages, when we're traveling, when we're at home, you're always near to us. As the wind blows around us, O God, remind us yet again of your presence. Remind us yet again of your spirit. We live in faith, O God, and for that we give you thanks. Make yourself known to us in so many different ways, and we will try to listen. We ask this in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray together, singing... Hear the good news of the gospel. God has promised to be faithful, and God is faithful to us. We know that God is near to us each and every day. We know that we are never alone, and for that gift we give thanks. This is the good news of the gospel. Amen. Reading Psalm 85, verses 8 to 13. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak. For he will speak peace to his people, to his faithful, to those who turn to him in their hearts. Surely his salvation is at hand for those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground, and righteousness will look down from the sky. The Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him and will make a path for his steps. Let's join together in singing our children's hymn, I Am the Church, You Are the Church. I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. The church is not a building, the church is not a steeple, the church is not a resting place, the church is a people. I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the With many kinds of faces, all colors and all ages, too, from all times and places. I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. Sometimes the church is marching, sometimes it's gravely burning, sometimes it's writing, sometimes hiding, always it's learning. I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. When the people gather, there's singing and there's praying, there's laughing and there's crying, sometimes all is saying. I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together.
Good morning and welcome to Children's Time. I heard that there is a celebration this morning and that's that today is Bruce's birthday. So we're going to sing happy birthday to Bruce. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. So happy birthday, Bruce, and here's a celebration for you. Also, uh, today marks the beginning of my vacation, so uh, I'm celebrating that as well. Um, so I'll be on vacation for August, and through the magic of technology and pre-recording, uh, there'll be two more services with me leading the worship here in the sanctuary, and then we'll be combined with uh, St. Columba by the Lake Presbyterian Church in Point Claire, Quebec. Uh, for the last three Sundays of August, and they'll live stream and, and uh, also have it recorded afterwards. So uh, we'll continue to worship together, and St. Columba will join us for the next two Sundays as well. So it's great to be able to use the technology to be connected uh, with churches uh, across Canada and around the world. I have something exciting to show you as well for children's time today, and that's this. This is the logo for our 200th anniversary of our church. And we thank Laura for designing this logo for us and uh, for the 200th anniversary committee and the session for working on it as well. There are a lot of things in that logo. You can see if you look at it, uh, the first thing I see is all of the people. And we were reminded in our meeting as we were talking about it that uh, the people actually form the church and that's the way Laura designed it. And we're reminded that if if we were celebrating the building for our 200th anniversary, we would never celebrate a 200th anniversary because our building isn't that old. But the church is the people, and that's what we sang about when we just sang, I am the church, you are the church as well. You'll also notice that the people are all different colors as well. Um, that represents uh, the rainbow people of God, so all the different colors of people around the world. And also a reminder that we are inclusive of everyone from the LGBTQI community as well. And all are welcome here at our church. Uh, you'll also notice there's a lot of different things in this. Uh, you'll notice an orange circle around the outside of the, uh, the logo as well. And that's a reminder for us that we have been on um, unceded territory of the Algonquin people uh, and the Anishinaabe people for our 200 years. And also a reminder for us of our history uh, and difficult history with First Nations people and Indigenous people, but also a reminder of the hope and prayer for healing and reconciliation and a reminder for us to work at that as we move forward. So there are so many different things on this logo. Um, it's got bigger people and smaller people. It's got all different colors. Um, and that's a reminder that, that we are the church. And I love that, that song we just sang, I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. And a reminder as we celebrate 200 years as a congregation, we celebrate that we have been the church for 200 years, the people. And the buildings come and go, and as we, we enjoy them and we love them while they're here, but we know the church will outlive all of these things. And so we give thanks for that gift. Let's have a prayer together. Dear God, thank you for our church that we've been around so long and that we'll continue to be here. Help us to welcome everybody who comes to this church and remember that we are the church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Go now in peace. Reading Matthew, chapter 8, verses 23 to 27. And when he got into the boat, his disciples followed him. A gale arose on the lake, so great that the boat was being swamped by the waves. But he was asleep. And they went and woke him up, saying, Lord, save us, we are perishing. And he said to them, Why are you afraid, you of little faith? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a dead calm. They were amazed, saying, What sort of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? Reading Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 to 8. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith, our ancestors received approval. By faith, 
we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith, Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain's. Through this, he received approval as righteous, God himself giving approval to his gifts. He died, but through his faith, he still speaks. By faith, Enoch was taken so that he did not experience death, and he was not found because God had taken him. For it was attested before he was taken away that he had pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God, for whoever would approach him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. By faith, Noah, warned by God about events as yet unseen, respected the warning and built an ark to save his household. By this, he condemned the world and became an heir to the righteousness that is in accordance with faith. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he set out not knowing where he was going. Let's come before God in prayer. Let us pray. Lord God, speak in the stillness, in the busyness, in the joys and challenges of our lives. Lord, speak, and we will listen. Amen. I've decided for the next three weeks to preach on faith, hope, and love. Of course, that grouping of concepts may sound familiar to you. It comes from the end of 1 Corinthians 13, when the Apostle Paul writes, and now faith hope and love abide these three, and the greatest of these is love. I often preach on love, mostly because Jesus talked about love pretty well more than he spoke about anything else. But what about faith and hope? Especially as we come close to the end of this pandemic, hopefully, how have faith and hope helped to carry us through? How have they sustained us? Thinking of faith, I was reminded of Mark's sermon from last Sunday about the woman and how her faith had healed her. Faith is referred to by Jesus quite often, but it's not necessarily clearly defined. In the story last week, we heard about the woman who had been hemorrhaging for 12 years. She was healed when she touched Jesus' garment. And as Mark pointed out in the sermon last week, Jesus did not take any credit for that healing. Instead, he said to her, your faith has made you well. What does that mean? How has her faith healed her? How has her faith made her well? What is the nature of of faith? It'd be helpful if we could define faith. It'd be helpful, but it wouldn't be easy. Our reading from the book of Hebrews gives us a good start. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. I've heard that passage quoted many times in my life, and I've read it over and over again, but I don't think I've ever preached on it. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for. If we use the example of the woman who had been hemorrhaging from the sermon last week, what was it that she hoped for? I think it was pretty clear that she hoped that she could be healed, for the bleeding to be stopped, to be able to return to her family to her friends, to be included in her community again. See, she came to Jesus seeking healing, and she believed that it was possible that Jesus could heal her. It's interesting that in describing faith just now, I ended up referring to what she believed. Faith and belief in English are rooted in the same word in Greek. The noun form is pistis, that's the Greek word, And when that's translated as a noun into English, the word is faith. But the verb form of that word, when it becomes an action, when that gets translated into English, it's translated to believe. When faith is put into action, it becomes believing. That sounds a little bit like the power of positive thinking, especially with this woman who believed that she could be healed, and so she was, if that's what faith is. 
Now, I'm not dismissing the power of positive thinking at all. Thinking positively, visualizing yourself succeeding at something can have a powerful effect on your life. Ask any sports psychologist who's preparing an athlete to compete. Visualizing yourself winning can make a big difference. But there's something else in this story about this woman who had been hemorrhaging for 12 years. First of all, the hemorrhaging had been going on for 12 years. Likely the power of positive thinking, if that's all it was, would have been able to act before 12 years. But what happened differently on this day was that she took a risk. She actually broke the social rules of the day. She risked going through a crowd. She risked contaminating those people with her uncleanness to come to Jesus, to come to God, to find healing. She had faith that her life could get better and that God and Jesus could help her life to get better, that she could be made well. She believed that there was hope for her. Despite the doctors, despite the years of suffering, despite the indications in life to the contrary, and there seemed to be so many indications after 12 years. That is faith. Faith, faith is the assurance of things hoped for. And faith is also the conviction of things that are not seen. The conviction of things not seen. We live in a world where seeing is believing, where documented scientific proof is expected. And you know what? I agree with that. I am comfortable with that in many things. I also understand that nothing is absolute. I'm happy that there have been and that there are still researchers working on developing and testing vaccines for COVID-19. I'm happy that Health Canada does a rigorous testing of vaccines and then, based on the best available scientific understanding and documentation from Canada and around the world, they make recommendations to us. They will not be perfect, but it will be the best documented scientific research available and offered by the best trained people to make those recommendations to us. I'm glad that they're not driven solely by the power of positive thinking when making plans about vaccines and by the hope or even the belief that the virus will simply go away, say, when the weather gets warmer or the belief that there may be some other medication, perhaps one that's used for malaria, let's call it hydroxychloroquine, and that it will heal people with COVID-19 even though there's no research. Or maybe bleach can be used in our bodies to get rid of it because after all, it works great as a disinfectant on a countertop, why would it not also work in my body? So let's just try it and see. No, we live in a world where seeing is believing where documented scientific proof is expected. And I agree with that. And I am comfortable with that in many things. But seeing is believing also has its limitations in science. Even in science, we hold on to a conviction of things not seen. It struck me as I read the next verse in this, the book of Hebrews, the next verse that comes after the one I've been quoting, that for me, it's theological, and it's faith, and it's science all wrapped into one verse. Let me read it for you. By faith we understand that worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. What is seen was made from things that are not visible. Have you ever seen a black hole? Well, yes and no. We can see evidence of black holes because we know that light cannot escape from them. We see the movement of stars and, and other things on the event horizon of a black hole, but we don't get to really see the black hole. Black holes were first theorized by Albert Einstein about 80 years ago, and the math and the observations seem to prove that he was right, but we don't really get to see the black hole. But seeing is believing. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. What about the origins of the universe? What about the Big Bang Theory? Is it more than just an amusing TV show? I believe that our universe likely did come into being through a super dense singularity and a Big Bang about 13.8 billion years ago. 
I didn't see it. But there's plenty of evidence to back it up. I will never get my mind around how that happened, how the universe expanded, and what is ex what is expanded into if there was nothing there for it exp to expand into, and yet physicists believe that that's the way it happened. In fact, you know that you're old enough, if you're old enough to remember when TVs had that fuzzy static on them when they weren't receiving a specific channel, I'm told that when we see that, we've witnessed evidence of the Big Bang. That static on your old TV was the radiation from the Big Bang being picked up by the cathode ray tube in your TV. I've seen that. I'm old enough to remember that. That's evidence of the Big Bang and radiation that's still around from it. But I didn't witness the Big Bang itself. I've only seen the evidence of it. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for the conviction of things not seen. What about a much simpler and more common experience? Have you ever seen the wind? Well, no, but I've seen leaves and dirt blown around by the wind. I've seen waves whipped up on the ocean by the wind. I've seen ripples on a lake created by a gentle breeze on a summer day. I've heard the wind rustling the leaves in a tree. And I've also seen trees pulled up by the roots by the wind. I've seen the effects of the wind, but I've never seen the wind. By faith, we understand worlds were prepared by the word of God so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. I believe the author of the biblical book of Hebrews must have held advanced degrees in both theology and astrophysics. There are many things that we believe without being able to see them. And often, like the big bang and black holes and, and wind, it's the evidence of the unseen things that help us to believe. I do not fully understand black holes, or the big bang theory, or even how vaccines protect us. I confess to you as well that I do not understand how the woman who had been hemorrhaging for 12 years was healed by her faith and by the touch of Jesus' cloak. What I can tell you is that there are evidence of all of these things all around us. Jesus did not explain how the woman's faith healed her, but he commended her for her bravery, for her, her act of faith in coming to him and coming to God for healing, for believing that he and God could help her. I don't think living by faith and being people of faith means letting go of our rational thought and hoping for the best. Saying our faith will keep us well in a pandemic so that you don't need to get a vaccine. You can gather for worship with as many people as you want. You can sing as loudly as you want in that group because God will protect you because you have faith. That's not faith as far as I'm concerned. And the overwhelming evidence, the evidence of that has shown us that that belief is false with super spreader events that have come from gatherings like that. I believe faith is also about trust. The author of the book of Hebrews goes on to give examples of people with faith, including Noah and Abraham and Sarah. What's interesting about all those examples is they all believed that God was calling them to do something and they acted on it, they took a risk to follow what they believe God was calling them to do, even if it seemed unbelievable. What's also interesting is that they were not perfect, pious people. Abraham and Sarah ventured out from their homeland in their declining years and believed God would make them parents of a great nation and give them many, many descendants. Well, actually, they believed it a lot of the time, but not all the time. They believed it, well, some of the time. And at other times, they laughed at God when God reminded them of this promise. Sarah tried to work around God's promise by convincing Abraham to have a, a child with her servant, Hagar. And Abraham didn't believe God would keep them safe in Egypt, so he handed Sarah over to an Egyptian official telling him that it was her sister, not his wife. And Noah built the ark and saved his family, and when the ark landed, he planted a vineyard, made some wine, and got drunk. All these are examples 
of the people of great faith from the Bible. They had faith in God, and they doubted, and they tried to do their own thing. They all had changing, growing, living, and dynamic faith that could handle being frustrated with God and with them making mistakes. What is faith for us today? Maybe it helps us to think about what does it mean to not have faith? What is it the opposite of faith? The opposite of faith, when you look into it, brings up words like mistrust and skepticism and disillusionment. Faith helps us to move beyond mistrust and skepticism and disillusionment in our world. Faith gives us hope for a better future and strength to weather the present. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for. It's a conviction of things not seen. I think faith is more than just hoping that everything will be all right. I think faith is knowing that sometimes things are not all right, but that God is present with us when things are difficult and that we are never alone. I think faith pushes us act, to act beyond our own self-interest, to reach out to help other people, whether it's right in our neighborhood or whether it's with vaccines around the world. I think faith is the strength to take a risk, sometimes when it's even a bit scary. I think faith is also not just limited to church people, that faith is intricately woven together with trust. I think faith is something our world could use a lot more of right now. Faith in God, yes, and also faith in our fellow human beings. Faith helps us to rise above the mistrust, skepticism, and disillusionment, and to live in hope. And even though things seem difficult now, to believe that life will get better, and it will get better. Faith is not a vaccination that's 97% effective against bad things happening to us in our lives. Faith is the assurance that God loves us and this world, and that acting on faith and love will make this world a better place. The woman who came to Jesus for healing, the woman who had been hemorrhaging for 12 years, did find physical healing from her illness. And in the end, Jesus said, your faith has made you well. May our faith make us well. May our faith give us the confidence to take risks to help others. May our faith in God be the foundation of our lives that gives us the strength to live life abundantly. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Let us pray. We know, O oh God, that we're always in your presence. We live by faith. We've been saved by grace through faith. We thank you for that gift given to us. As we think of the needs that exist in our world, the needs that exist around us, we know that we can bring them to you in prayer, and for that we give you thanks. As we think of the needs of our world, we think especially of those suffering with the forest fires, it seems almost everywhere, out in BC and northern Ontario, and other places as well. We ask for ways that we can help, that those fires can be brought under control, that we can reach out to those in need. We think as well of the families in Florida, knowing that the search has now ended, that most of the body, bodies have been recovered from that condominium that collapsed. For those who continue to mourn and ask questions, we ask for your comfort and for your peace. May they continue to ask the questions so that this might not happen again. Lord God, we also thank you for the gift of our church. As we celebrate this 200th year anniversary, we ask that you would push us out into the community that surrounds us and that by faith we might act to help others in need. We pray for healing, especially for those who are suffering with the ongoing effects of COVID-19, effects that we may not know for a good long time. For those people who are long haulers, oh God, give them strength and help them to continue to seek answers to the difficult questions. We also pray for those who are recovering from illness, especially those recovering from cancer and cancer treatments. I pray that you'll be with them, O oh God, and continue to give them healing. Now in silence, we bring you our own individual prayers, and some of these are so deep inside us that we know words will never touch them. But in silence, in the deep longings of our hearts, we bring you our prayers. Amen. Our closing hymn today is to Abraham and Sarah, number 478.
As we go into the world that surrounds us, we go knowing that God is present wherever we are. Wherever we find ourselves through these summer months, God is as near as our very breath. We live by faith, and for that we give thanks. Now may the Christ who walks on wounded feet walk with you on the road. May the Christ who serves with wounded hands stretch out your hands to serve. May the Christ who loves with a wounded heart open your heart to love. May you see the face of Christ in everyone you meet. And may everyone you meet see the face of Christ in you. Go now in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Some bright morning when this life is over, I'll fly away to that home on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away, I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away in the morning when I die, hallelujah, bye bye. Weary.